Today at ShopDap.com, we answer the question, is there really an easy way to get rid of carbon buildup on direct injection engines? If you've followed us for some time, you know that I made a video about this a long time ago, back when I had a haircut that my wife liked that I absolutely hated, and uh, I sucked on camera. So don't watch that video, watch this one. The carbon buildup we're talking about is going to be deposits left on the intake valves of your engine. Now this is a fairly new issue that's happened over the past 10 to 15 years and has come with the dawn of direct injection. There's a lot of speculation from people that certain services or easy fixes for carbon buildup. So in this video, we're going to test it to see if we have an easy way to fix carbon buildup. Before we do that, we're gonna explain port injection versus direct injection which is what's causing our issue. This is the port injection system. It is the McDonald's quarter pounder of the fuel injection world. The system was revolutionary for its day and will still get the job done when you need it. The fuel injections on a port injection system are in the intake manifold runners, one for each cylinder. When the fuel injectors in this system open, they spray fuel into the engine. This fuel is sprayed past the intake valves as they open up. This sprays some of that fuel onto the intake valve as it passes by and will clean off some of that valve. This is the direct injection system. It is the five guys of the fuel injection world, better in almost every way except for the cost. Let's be honest, you can't look me straight in my eyes and tell me McDonald's is better than five guys. No, you can't. Maybe for the price, but. The fuel injectors on a direct injection system have one fuel injector located in each cylinder actually inside the combustion chamber. You usually find that in close proximity to the spark plug. Being that the combustion chamber is under a lot of pressure, the fuel system on direct injection engines require much higher fuel pressures. This is why direct injection engines will have mechanically driven high pressure fuel pumps that put out somewhere upwards of around 3000 PSI versus a standard port injection system which puts out around 60 PSI. So pretty big difference, 3000, 60. When the injector opens on a direct injection engine, as you would imagine, the fuel sprays directly into the cylinder, which means the fuel never passes those intake valves. To understand where the carbon comes from, we need to look at the PCV or positive crank ventilation system. Engines have pressure that builds in the bottom of a crankcase. Now that pressure has to go somewhere. And because people got really bent out of shape about burning a hole in the ozone, because who cares about our environment? PCV valves were invented. Modern PCV valves take the vapors from the crankcase, which is usually unburned fuel and oil vapors, and recirculates them back into the engine to be burned during the combustion process. Back in the day, on older vehicles, they would take that hydrocarbon-rich mixture and dump that shit in the street. And I'm serious, they, old cars just dumped it in the road. The issue that happens with recirculating these vapors through the PCV system is that as these vapors get recirculated, they leave small deposits on the intake valves as they pass by and they're sucked into the engine. Since the direct injection system has no fuel spraying on the back of those valves, it continues to slowly build up and build up and build up until it looks something like this. Ugh. When built up enough, this carbon buildup will restrict airflow causing a variety of issues. Most notably, it's going to be issues around fuel mileage and cold start misfires. I'm sure you're wondering, how can I prevent this from happening to my direct injection car? Well, you can't delete the PCV valve because deleting the PCV valve will get you arrested by the PCV police. Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America. One solution by OEM manufacturers is to use port and direct injections like many VW and Audi models in Europe, but not here because I think cafe standards, but who am I? I'm just a guy. The most common way to address carbon buildup on most engines is going to be removing the intake manifold, accessing the intake valves, using either a media blaster, a walnut blaster, or some sort of combination of chemicals and picks where you scrape all the stuff off to get the valves clean. This is a service that is not going to be inexpensive and is gonna be required every 70 to 100,000 miles, depending on the year, make, model, and engine of the vehicle. For our audience, TSI engines, have a much more common issue than the newer Gen 3 Mark 7 engines. The TSI I would expect to be 60, 70,000 miles when you, before you start to have issues. Later Gen 3 engines, we have this one that had 146,000 miles on it and it actually didn't have that bad of carbon buildup. Now, let's talk about the most common preventatives most people would say or theorize would be fixes for this problem. Number one, Italian tune-ups. Two, catch cans. Three, 
intake manifold services like the one we're about to show you or something like seafoam. And lastly, water meth injection. Not that kind of meth. This isn't Breaking Bad. Call me Walter. Walter water meth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's first address the Italian tune-up. The Italian tune-up as per Urban Dictionary is when the driver of a motor vehicle runs the engine up to near full load and speed for an extended period of time to burn off built up carbon in the combustion chamber. The idea that this is going to resolve carbon buildup on intake valves is a silly idea. This would be like rolling yourself in honey, then covering yourself in sand and getting on a carnival swing and just saying, if you spun it fast enough, you could get that honey off. Just keep going, carny man. That's where you'll find the meth is with the carny man. In summary, the Italian tune-up doesn't work. It will not resolve your, your carbon buildup and your intake valves in this particular instance. May get some stuff off your pistons if you had something on there. Uh, that's possibly true, although there's a lot of questionability about that because you have to get carbon hot enough to break off and burn it. And, and I, the engine generally, combustion timber is not gonna get hot enough. There's papers about it and shit. just read it, all right? There's, there's stuff. I, I read it, you should read it. Next up, we're gonna talk about the intake manifold service. Now this would include products like Seafoam or the products that we're about to use from Berryman. Uh, this is something that you spray a chemical down the intake while the engine is running to pass over the intake valves and clean them off. My opinion about what these manifold services are is a decent preventative as something that if you were to service it on a, let's say semi-regular interval, 15, 20,000 miles, you could prevent carbon buildup from happening. But once your carbon has already built up, this is not going to be a solution that's going to be a cost effective. And you might have to run so many of them to run through the engine and it would cost you a bunch of money to do it. Now, usually the carbon buildup on these intake valves is kind of goopy. It's a mixture of carbon hardness and kind of goopiness from the oil wetness that's passing by. It makes it very difficult to actually just get it off easily. So even when you're scraping it and using chemicals, it's a combination of letting it soak and then scraping it, then letting it soak and scraping it. And that's why I suspect this is not going to be the silver bullet everybody hopes it's gonna be. Before we proceed any further, let's give you a little context. The vehicle we're working on has 71,000 miles. We had already been in there and had the intake manifold off while we were doing a water pump video. And so we took all these pictures then. This carbon buildup is cylinder one, two, three, and four. I would consider this to be moderate carbon buildup. And this actually, I think is worse than the 146,000 mile car, but this car was purchased used and came from a rural area where I suspect it probably didn't use First of all, 93 octane, and they probably didn't use high quality oil, which is why this car has more advanced carbon buildup than that higher mileage car, because I know that customer was somebody who used liquid molly and, and very quality oils and fuels. Berryman sent us this product a while back. This is not a sponsored video. They did send us this product uh, to test and for this specific reason. I uh, was scared to make this video because I was afraid, uh, couldn't see myself actually doing all this work. So here I am. Now we have our can that we're ready to do our service and then our car is ready to go. So we're gonna start our service. So we unplugged our map sensor here on the intake and then we took off our map sensor, just had one screw in there. And then we can use this to stick right in this hole and actually get this service performed just like so. Now on this particular vehicle, this is the easiest way to do it. On earlier vehicles, TSI engines, which were more likely to have carbon buildup, you actually have a sensor in the front here, which is a temp sensor that I would use for this particular service. On those cars, you are gonna to wanna to make sure you unplug your mass airflow sensor, which is gonna be located usually right underneath your intake here on your intake hose. There's gonna be a connector here. This car has a map sensor, so you don't need to worry about it. Now we have our hose already in the manifold and it's blocked off to the best of our ability. And we can start our car up and then start our service. And we are following the exact procedures recommended by them. We have this silver adapter in, which is gonna be for smaller engines. They have a gold one for bigger ones. And we have this in. So they say to have this can, hold it down to get it to go into the engine. And then you're gonna have an idle dip. And then the engine should compensate for it, running a little rough. And then you can hold it all the way down to get it to lock in place. Your engine's gonna run rough when you do this because uh, 
it's dumping a bunch of chemicals in there. What they do say is if it does stall your car, you should turn it off. That is because if you continue to spray this down and then try to continue it spraying into the engine and you don't stop it and then try to start it later, it might hydro lock the engine. So don't do that. Now, you will see some exhaust coming out like this. It doesn't smell good and I wouldn't want to stand by it too long. Uh, yeah, that's normal. I'm getting away from it now. So now you can see our can is empty and it's all done. So as for the instructions, we're gonna turn the car off. We are going to restore the vehicle back and let it sit for 30 minutes and then drive it for 10 minutes. Oh yeah, it's normal for it to smoke pretty bad after. Now we're gonna take this intake manifold off. So now I have pictures on my phone of the original stuff and now we're gonna to react to uh, how good of a job this did, the intake manifold service from the Barry one we just did. Uh, and let's take a look here. Cylinder one, I think what you can see is it definitely did a decent amount near the base of the valve in terms of the gooey buildup. It's still there as you can see, it's definitely handily there still, but it did remove some of it. Hey, future Paul here. Just wanted to give you an update about these pictures here. The before and after pictures, the reason why they look a little bit different is the before pictures, the valves are actually closed on this car and the after pictures, the valves are open. So the top portion being smooth and shiny is because that part goes into the engine when the valve is closed. And that is why they look just like that. Cylinder two seems like it didn't quite do as much. Uh, it did reduce some of that build up the thickness of it around the valve stem or the or the valve itself, but it again didn't get rid of it completely. Cylinder three, same thing, definitely reduction, but not complete removal. And then cylinder four. Okay, cylinder four, it does appear to be like it may be one of the best ones. It's possible that this is because of the location where the map sensor is on the intake manifold and where we serviced it. So it's proximity to that cylinder may, means maybe more of this stuff went down that cylinder. Again, these services are not an exact science and aren't gonna be a perfect service. And this is a good indication of that is we don't even have a balance between all of them, but it's a lot less than paying someone like us to rip off your intake manifold and then get out a media blaster and blast all this stuff off. Go, 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 go. I started blasting. Bam, bam. So as you saw the results, we did accomplish something by doing the service. My thoughts are, is again, more on the preventative end than, than the fixing side. These cars don't have as big of an issue with carbon buildup. So if you had a car that, let's say it was a car that had cold start misfires, you would probably have to run three of these through there before you probably even resolve the issue. Now, maybe you think that's cost effective for you. Maybe it's better than having to take it in somewhere. That may be the best choice for you, but I wouldn't recommend running too many services down there because you don't want to jam all these chemicals back to back to back through your, through your car. So uh, that makes me a little bit concerned and you don't really want to be constantly running a lot of harsh chemicals through the engine uh, in that circumstance. So let's talk about the rest of the options. Now that we've done all that, let's talk about catch cans. Catch cans are a system that has two hoses that runs either in line with the PCV valve or removes the PCV valve to swap for a catch can. This will circulate that same crankcase vapor through a hose into a can that has baffles in it. It will condense all those contaminants and have them drop down. The air will continue to run back to the engine to be burned. This prevents some of those contaminants from going back into the engine, but you have to service this, which means it fills up. Usually it fills up with a combination of water, unburned fuel, and oil vapors that all kind of condense into some sort of chocolate milk looking thing that you have to make sure doesn't overfill and then dump into your engine. So this is something that requires servicing. It also has some problems around cold weather countries because it gets more moisture and then can freeze. There's a lot of complicated pieces to catch cans. Most times people who are gonna have catch cans on their cars are going to be people who do it for performance and the benefits of some carbon reduction is a kind of an added benefit. It isn't a silver bullet for resolving carbon buildup. It is something that will help slow it down a little though. Now let's talk about meth. Not that kind of meth, this kind of meth. Water methanol systems generally add a single injector. Hold on. Oh, 
a, si a single injector to your intake system to spray a water methanol mixture into your intake. Now generally this is going to be used for cooling purposes or to advance timing, which is also for cooling purposes, it has combustible properties of the water methanol fluid fluid. So injecting methanol, if you tune for it, can give you a lot of power, although most people don't tune for it because there's a lot of problems. If you don't have the right fail safes in place, you could blow up your engine. If you're using it for cooling, it's a very great benefit because you don't have a lot of heat soak problems that you might have from the power loss you have around heat, especially on turbo engines. And so that's what water methanol is usually used for. As you can see from all of these items, retrofitting water methanol is not something I'd recommend for most people. And this, this has to be mounted in your trunk somewhere or maybe in your engine bay if you can fit it. Uh, some people do repurpose their washer fluid reservoir for a water meth can and then pump it straight out of there. But as you can imagine, getting rid of your, all that stuff is not easy or something that most people would wanna do on a daily driver. This is why water meth is not really a viable solution for carbon buildup in my mind, although it would resolve the carbon buildup issue, it isn't something you should do for carbon buildup. So in conclusion, there is not an easy way to fix your carbon buildup issue. There are a bunch of preventative ways. If you add them up, they will likely help you and maybe prevent you from having to pay somebody to do it. Servicing uh, is a good option and all the other options along the way would have incremental benefits to servicing your vehicle and preventing carbon from building up. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and go to shopdap.com where you can find out more information for Volkswagen Audi parts, performance and accessories. Bye.